czy gdzie na świecie. W ciągu zaledwie 60 lat od powstania pierwszej manufaktury powstaje przemysłowa, wielonarodowościowa metropolia. Jednak wiatry historii nie zawsze jej sprzyjały. To, co zniszczył los, odbudowują łodzianie. Nasza Łódź. Miasto wielkich szans. Od 600 lat w sercu Polski i Europy. Jesteśmy Polakami. Jesteśmy niezwykłym społeczeństwem. Zawsze w obliczu wielkiego wyzwania potrafimy się mobilizować. Potrafimy stawić czoła wielkim wyzwaniom. Bo nie potrafimy stać obojętnie. Bo obchodzi nas bezpieczeństwo i przyszłość naszych dzieci. Bo wierzymy, że nadzieja zwycięża apatię, lęk i strach. Bo mimo wszelkich przeciwności nigdy się nie poddajemy. Potrafimy ciężko pracować, wspierać się i działać razem. Bo zależy nam na naszej ojczyźnie, naszym osiedlu, naszej ulicy. Bo chcemy naszych niezbywalnych praw i wolności. Bo nie oddamy naszych marzeń. Nadchodzi punkt zwrotny. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ewa Raczyńska, and it is my honor and pleasure to host the panel Yesto in vitro, how to build an effective infertility treatment system. I'm going to talk with excellent guests. Magda Bowska grabowska Wacławek, a vocalist and a composer. Agnieszka Pomaska, a Polish MP, a planning potentiary of the Yesto in vitro legislative initi initiative the president of that committee, in fact. Małgorzata Rozenek Majdan, a TV a host, a lawyer, and, and promoter of in vitro method in infertility treatment, deputy president of the Yes to in vitro, in vitro Committee, Kamin Mieszczankowski, a security expert, a father of a daughter who was born via in vitro. And the initiator of the in vitro is a head program. All right, this. Uh, WHO has recognized infertility as the civilizational disease. In Poland, it affects about 20% of our society, and that makes 1.5 million pairs. 40% of those can try an effective treatment by natural medical methods, but 60 percent, 900,000 couples need to ask for assistance in specialist centers. Well, I feel that in vitro, in the media area, it's different with the social area. We are sometimes ashamed to discuss it. Socially, it's a private, private taboo topic. But in the media space, in vitro is discussed. Malgosia, your son is 17. What was it like than 20 years ago? Well, surprisingly, better than now. Good morning, everybody. I'm happy to be with you here in which today. But 18 years ago, when for the first time I had the diagnosis that puts uh, matters clear, either in vitro, I, I'll never be the mother. Well, in vitro was thought of and discussed in, in like a space technology, rocket science. People were very curious, how do you do it? What is going to happen? And that was a medical uh, novelty, a breakthrough. And it gave you a sense of participation in a great procedure for which a Nobel Prize should be awarded, a great medical success. Then my middle son, who's now almost 14, started to uh, be uh, in this breaking mood of 
in vitro. And Henrik, the three-year-old, is the child of a revolution. It's a frontline child because when he was uh, born, when I was pregnant with him, there was the flood of negative emotions from the governing party and supporting milieus. Well, 18 years ago, did, did you talk to people that you uh, opted for in vitro? Was it a sort of natural process? You entered, you stuck to your friends and uh, acquaintances. Well, I'm happy to be from a supporting environment. I, I didn't need to hide it. And only when I learned about the diagnosis, the first phone call I made being totally broken to my mum, and I told her, well, that's not such a bad thing about happening to me. And my mother said, don't worry, be happy, there is a solution. But I didn't have that need to share it broadly with intimate and private aspect of my life anyway. I know it will never uh, be turned back. My children will forever be in vitro children, and I want them not to feel ashamed or embarrassed that that's the way it is. When I saw that the narrative in Poland was tending to burden such children with, with a, a, a bad mark, I decided to do what I can to speak openly, loudly, and without shame about in vitro. Ten years ago, it wasn't like that. Between 2013 and 2016, there was this program in vitro treating infertility through out of non-systemic infertilization. Then, 17,000 couples had 22,000 children. In 2016, once the government changed, the program was terminated. But a legislative initiative, yes, for in vitro, was established. No, 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 it's not like that. In 2000, between 2013 and 16, uh, the Prime Minister Kopacz's government arranged a program which allowed to have over 22,000 children until today. It was such a huge success of pro, real pro-family politics that the program was shown as an example of truly effective mechanism. So many couples benefited, and uh, thanks to this very program, so many pregnancies were actually conceived. In 2016, Napro Technology with Minister Rajivu, with his decision, he said, we, will, we would no more continue in vitro. So we have two aspects. The first one is, all of a sudden, we terminate financing for the in vitro procedure, and many citizens were left without money. And the in vitro procedure is not one of uh, uh, event. It takes use of treatment, diagnostics, investing your own money in savings. We know how efficient the Polish healthcare system is. So many of us simply would prefer to take some tests privately. They are frequently pairs or couples who are drained in money, and all of a sudden refunding is terminated. And there was another problem, and we could hear that from so sociologists. The moment when the state withdraws the financing for the method is the moment where, in the men so society's understanding, there is a doubt arising. Is this method truly effective? Is it really good? Is it proper? Or, and in some how its uh, legitimacy is uh, uh, undermined, and that happened in Poland, and the regression in communicating the method, or how some uh, milieus started talking about it, is the result of the decision. 99.9 uh, million by Napro Technology, uh, the uh, Supreme Control Authority, uh, uh, verified that and sh uh, it showed it was fully ineffective and even the authorities terminated the idea of providing the news uh, uh, how many people actually got pregnant when they reported for the first year compared to several thousand people from uh, 
in vitro, they had 70 pregnancies, and the disproportion was so huge that they stopped reporting. In vitro started to get support from local authorities, but finally we have this initiative, yes for in vitro in the parliament. What's happening to it today? Well, indeed, I trust that the campaign and the response to this initiative, and I need to mention some more names. We, uh, with Maugus Atalusenek, Maidan, co-chaired the committee, but the initiative was actually launched by Prime Minister, former Health Minister Eva Kopac, who was so active. Barbara Novacka supported us strongly. She is here at the uh, uh, parallel panel. You can see her, talk to her. And when we opened the initiative to collect signat supporting signatures, had some goals. It was not merely to restore in vitro. Of course, it's a basic idea, but today, in the present time, we understand that it's impossible. But the pressure makes sense. Apart from restoring in vitro, we had also another important goal that is educational purpose to remind people that in vitro will give life. It's something good. In vitro should not be controversial. It deserves state support. In fact, it's the state's obligation to help financing those who simply want to have children. And for me, purse families who want to have children via in vitro, they are heroes. Due to many reasons, we know it's not an easy way. It's physically excruciating for women, but it also financially draining. And I need to say that uh, this campaign, talking to people in different cities when we traveled around the country to collect signatures, that only made reassured me that that was the first thing we would do once we win the election. But we collected almost half a million signature. That's, that's a huge number indeed. We collected that in rain, in frost. So that was the time of the year then. And about 80% of people do not see any controversies about the method. We could feel it, sense it. That was so important for us. We had people coming to us, looking at us, me and Barbara. They, were, they knew that we were politicians. And they would say, we do not vote for you, but we'll sign. There were women coming with their husbands and said, let's do for for the children, perhaps not ours. We didn't know if they are going to need it or not. Let's do it for all children. And that there were so many moving moments when we see, could see we didn't do it for ourselves. We didn't do it for applause. We simply did it. It was good. It was positive. The, the perception, well, there are not so many topics in Poland that would, you, I, I'm not talking about the parliament, that would unify society so much. People know we are, a, we are in demographic downturn. We know about rising infertility problems. We know three million people suffer from that. And for me, in political terms, it's beyond comprehension. Why did they do that? It's stupid. It's unwise. It's harmful. Uh, that's my priority for today. I need to say, I admire, we need to highlight that, uh, that those people who are trying to get children, I have two great daughters, I've never had any issues with getting pregnant, and I'm so supportive for everybody trying. It's my, my moral obligations. I manage, I want everybody else to manage. So, so the project yes for in vitro was, was started in a parliament we held first debate where we discussed the project it wasn't easy because debate started around 10 p.m in the parliament you will admit those are not normal working hours but we managed um, spectators of the debate were quite limited when it comes to the Parliament room. It was the right side where we have uh, law and uh, order um, 
members of parliament it was um, empty, but it was not a problem for us. We tried to be um, working anyway. It was the first reading. The project went to the committee and later to a political freezer, so to put it. But when it comes to um, civic initiatives, this is a category of the project that uh, is to be continued. Normally, after the finish of the um, parliament um, turn, it would go to the garbage, but it's not in the case of um, civic initiatives. These projects will be continued in the next uh, parliament um, uh, team, no matter which side will win. And I believe that the party will win, that will restore in vitro and this civic initiative will be returned to life. It's what you underline that most of our society, definitive majority, supports this method of infertility treatment. And no matter how many things divide us, voices from three or four different sides are very similar. Yet it is a very difficult path. Magda Gubowska is on this path. Magda, how does that look from your perspective? Good afternoon. I'm um, listening to that and all the time just nodding because I so much admire your struggle, your common fight for acceptance to this method, not just by our society, but also the government. I think that education is also a key here. It's what you said as well. I myself, in the form of my creative uh, voice, the big silence, I tried together with Magda Zielinska um, show the suffering of uh, women that are struggling this, with this subject. She meets a pregnant woman, but she is not capable of having children on her own. We try to be so universal and show different types of internal conflict that uh, partners of uh, women and women themselves um, suffer in this. My perspective is that indeed this is a taboo subject and um, of course it's not strange that uh, so intimate things we prefer to keep to ourselves but on the other side um, I am uh, beginning to be more and more irritated because I think that our voice should be also important and I think that there should be a support for women on this most rudimental level psychological support just showing that there are other women that also struggle with this and that it is not so black and white and if you decide to try this method if you use uh, funds for that this is a kind of a risk because you are not sure whether this treatment will be successful or not if you are giving yourself this chance it's really difficult to receive this support very often women do not have this support in their surrounding. That's why education is so important to explain what this method is about. I often f uh, see that people even in my environment, generally understood environment, are not do not know exactly what that is, which is quite shocking. I thought it would be the basis that can be um, accomplished to explain that. But it's connected to everything, to the system we are in, the education and the first basic school level. It's a really wide uh, subject and my personal perspective is that somehow in this process I do not have achievements in the form of a children yet. But uh, I uh, really hope that this will happen. I had to somehow process that inside myself to speak loudly about that. 
and I think that this kind of a voice is also a support for women that are some way on the crossroads. They are still waiting and maybe the successes of others are not still so motivating. We are talking also about different psychological aspects. I look at that from a perspective of a person sensitive to suffering of others with empathy. And for me it's important to talk about it. I think we should talk about it in our household, households, in our families. I read so many comments about that and I think that it is similar from perspective of women and from the husbands. It's good you mentioned this situation because husbands are often omitted in this situation. Yet they should be supportive in this process and that is very difficult. All that happens on the body of a woman. She is under this main burden. But it's often omitted about uh, weakness and suffering of men. That they are not entitled to that. Quite often those are comments from young women that are my listeners. From my audience they would say, wow, I never expected I can have a problem with that. So they would not even uh, consider existence of this problem. We had a chance to talk to Magda before that uh, under um, Big Silence uh, album there were so many comments uh, of women, I'm not alone. And it is um, worrying and scary for me, for one side, that in this media social sphere there are voices about in vitro, but no one goes the level um, under that women would not hear from each other. To, uh, that would help to make this decision. You mentioned men. We have uh, one man in our uh, panel. Kamal, uh, Kamil, uh, what was that in case of your daughter? How the situation looked? Perhaps. I'm not the best example, the most representative example. In our case, we tried to have a baby for many years. The situation lasted and led us to Invinet uh, Clinic. I am very grateful to them. It's not that I am advertising them. And after the third time, we were successful. No matter that it was a financing from the uh, Warsaw a local budget, we received a lot of return. Well, generally, never, nowhere in Poland the whole procedure is financed, only procedures are co-financed, which is not even a half of the money that have to be spent on that. I am so glad that I could afford it. But in Poland there are hundreds of thousands of people that would not be able to afford it first youngest uh, person that uh, turned to the program had 21 year young girl that only starts an adult life and she has an infertility problem they struggle with that together with her husband and my impression is that when we talked about infertility as a civilization disease when we in the context of in vitro my impression that a huge part of right-wing uh, political uh, audience in Poland have a civilizational civilization problem with that why because this is a treatment method and please explain what was the origin of the origin of in vitro to hid this program originated from my disagreement about what was written in the history and uh, history history and nowadays book it was forbidden to perform abortion a day after pills were um, forbidden generally we are approaching a Taliban direction so if now I am reading an official a textbook for teenagers that explain that in vitro is something evil then after a year 
uh, Mr. Charnek would uh, stand out and say, but in, we teach that in vitro is something evil. Of course, I'm being very um, extreme here in my examples, but we have a similar experience that our imagination is often too limited when it comes to these people. So I thought to myself, today we are talking about this is something evil, tomorrow it will be forbidden, a day after that, um, children that were born, born in this way will be stigmatized because uh, it would be easy to stigmatize people that were so determined to, to fight for this life. It was not that this life appeared by itself. We understand that it appears in many people on its own. We had to fight for that. And then someone comes and tries to stigmatize this my little girl. I have no words in the vocabulary of educated people to describe these people. Because, believe me, if I stand face to face with them, I would, exp I would uh, say what I think about them. Those are very bad thoughts. One more thing, in vitro program was uh, started with the collecting funds to pay to um, law attorneys to make a process against Czarnik and other. I think it was uh, successful. I paid 30,000 to lawyers and the rest I allocated to the in vitro to hit program. And right now we have 17 confirmed pregnancies from the program. We count to have around 30, 35, so we are in the midway. But we still have 17 confirmed pregnancies. I would really like to see that these pregnancies turned into babies, but that's what is going to happen, I'm sure of that. We are talking about how to build a um, effective infertility treatment system. We know the data. The numbers say that infertility treatment through in vitro is effective. We have children that uh, are born in that more than 22,000. but. So we can go back to that level to build the system. You started to talk about education. How do you think this can be built from this very scratch? It should be built from scratch, from grounds, as you put it nicely. We need to discuss about infertility problems, not just in our houses, but also in school. The lack of sexual education makes it difficult for us to talk about anything uh, that describes the beginning of life, we need to talk as open as possible about this part of uh, human life, and school is a very good place for that. Some data, uh, some numbers show this uh, social support for that. You wanted to collect 30,000. Uh, we wanted to collect 100,000, we collected half a million. It shows that people understand the in vitro method as a treatment method. And people see the demographical, uh, pr demographic problem because of the policy that was um, uh, realized during last years. People are afraid of, uh, of pregnancy, looking at the economic and social environment, families that want to have a baby uh, is something uh, important. If we continue in the same system, the our social support system will just uh, cease to exist. What is very important, what Kamil said with the organization Nashbochan, when they very explicitly um, discussed um, the information that should be in school textbooks. We need to talk to, to teenagers with older youth and then on the social, um, uh, social platform. And that's important. We need to do everything that the program 
for which we collected signatures. This civic initiative that uh, is to allocate 500 million slots for treatment of the in vit with in vitro method, not for the procedure itself, but the whole surrounding or um, taking care of partners of uh, women that undergo in vitro process. This is magical procedure and that's the only way in vitro should be mentioned with the huge patience and empathy and pace we need to address all the doubts that appear in the heads of opponents of this method that um, often are originated from their um, um, ignorance we need to change it into understanding I just wanted to add one thing that often the opponents of this method do not understand that this is a final choice for the couple and it, uh, it is important to be underlined that it's not uh, made for pleasure, it's a procedure, it's a necessity. If you really want to become a parent, it can be the only choice. This method um, brings many burdens, financial, but not only for the women. As every th treatment, it has its um, side effects, and it's very difficult. It's uh, difficult for women to physically go through that, as well as uh, psychologically. That's why the education is a key. We should talk about that loudly in a school level and just freely talk about that with our colleagues to break these barriers. I think it's so important. Camille, a few words from you. I also would like to share a quite controversial thought that from legal abortion there will not be a um, perfect in vitro system because I think that a, women, a woman that makes a decision, I can only imagine um, how she would feel, but a woman that decides to have a baby, that have um, problems, um, health issues, she understands that this pregnancy can be uh, different, difficult, there can be different things. She should be sure that if something goes wrong, there will not be six police officers standing out next to her uh, hospital bed. She has to have the security on every stage of this procedure, 100% of support and understanding from the state. I think this is so important because today women are afraid to um, become pregnant. You can't imagine how many women uh, texted me when I announced that we start with the program. They said they even are afraid to talk about that in their environments because well, they would say, my husband would, would lose a job. Well, because he works there um, next to the uh, priest. And there are stories like that. So without a full support of women in end-to-end -end process, from the beginning till the end, considering all bad things that might happen, if all that is taken care of, women will not be afraid to become pregnant, they would not be afraid of the consequences of the pregnancy because they would know that the state would take care about them. I would just also to add that quite often the opponents of in vitro procedure address the increased amount of um, uh, um, children with uh, um, health problems that was, were born in this method, but there are um, researchers in U, from US that show that if there is a diagnosis of very serious infant uh, um, problems, um, a female would decide not to uh, have the abortion, because quite often a woman that went through in vitro would not decide to have the pregnancy terminated if there are some obstacles. But that's showing the determination that that woman really wants to have a baby, no matter the problems. That's why this increased um, a per percent, not because the procedure itself. The, the problem how much is to be done can be seen from the infertility atlas in Europe. 
during our campaign and our stalk uh, association with the reactive we presented that atlas and poland in terms of uh, access to infertility treatment uh, is last in the eu and the second but last in europe right before albania We lost uh, the football game, and we hardly are winning in this issue, but still, it's, it's shameful. It's the whole system, as we are talking here. It's not just access to in vitro per se, but also this feeling how uh, easy it is for a woman to get to a gynecologist, because we can simply say not everybody can afford a private appointment, and this is a remarkable issue. The smaller the place, the, the greater the issue is. It's just this feeling, uh, what care can a woman expect in the hospital, what uh, perinatal care would look like. And we are at the very end with that. It's terrifying because in the past year, eight years, the government spent loads of money to something so ineffective. So the key is that Polish couples, Polish families, men and women, can have a choice, that they can choose the method they want. I'm uh, strongly against telling that that somebody who believes a natural method should be disqualified. Nothing like that whatsoever. Uh, we should recommend the best, uh, most effective method. Well, it, it's been like that. Yes, yes, that's true. So I believe that it is critical to talk about it. Uh, education, because this is something I wanted to talk about. Uh, we spoke about the uh, uh, hit uh, course book at schools. The key is to say, what's the situation like? 22,000 children were born thanks to the Polish uh, in vitro program. In total, there were 100,000 children born in vitro. Uh, we, we want to have this data in the head course book and uh, 22,000, 100,000 to tell who terminated in vitro, what inequalities were formed because of that. We can say in vitro is available, but for the richest. And that's the way where we can say that. Perhaps the biology course book at schools should say what can reduce fertility, what threats there are, so that girls who begin their adult life uh, know what's risky. Many of them do have dreams to have a family, to have children, even at the very early age just to talk about it, that smoking is a bad idea, that plastic uh, uh, packaging can affect hormone system. So that they don't drink the, the, the Kaczynski's advice was it good because it it was addressed to a bad age group, but certainly true. All that should be taught during the very early stages of education, black and white. It's enough if we write the truth in school course books, and I believe that's the basic wish. We are talking about early education. I believe it is vital, but then we go one step up. A gynecologist access talking that every woman saying that every woman who enters her adult age has the right to visit a gynecologist to go to talk to to face her doubts. Magda says she suffers from endometriosis. I've talked to hundreds of women suffering from the very safe disease. Uh, it's, in fact, an uh, uncurable disease. They, for many years, have been told, you're a woman, your period has to be painful. You give birth, it will ease. So we are getting up uh, uh, one level higher in building basic healthcare. Magda, what was it like with you? How did you learn? that you can't have not children by natural methods. 
Well, it was because of the diagnosis and in a state uh, a state owned institution I was diagnosed in 2013 I was far younger than and uh, only then only then was I beginning I, I, I was working hard on my record that was uh, published 2016 but that was my time of search and research I was focused on my job and then I was thunderstruck by this news it can be difficult but endometriosis apart from the diagnosis and and the uh, uh, a fauci of endometriosis were removed were you diagnosed quickly yes i must say it was pretty fast and i was lucky enough because i was in truly good hands but i th i feel privileged i'm from also i lived there i was quickly uh, referred to a good doctor and i believe that the same path for a person living away from a huge uh, municipal center especially so active like Warsaw, that may be very uh, much more difficult for her of course I, I i must admit that my preliminary diagnosis was through my private gynecologist because my previous experience with public health care system had been so bad that after the first uh, uh, visit i i quit it so some uh, ever since then it's been private uh, uh, gynecologist and the diagnosis well endometriosis is still much an, an unknown disease a lot of things have changed since 2013 I'm under a new diagnosis process then I was left to my own devices with just simple news you may have problems but you need to do something about it on your own well I trust there should be ways for women uh, so that we can tell them what they can do with this news how to go for treatment there are so many things there is uh, diet life hygiene uh, hormonal stimulation not just to ease the pain the suffering but to help uh, uh, to have children in the future so I believe this is a great job to be done I know that and endometriosis issue is not just in Poland it's, it's a global problem uh, this disease just like many diseases female diseases are understudied and requires lots of effort so we have education prevention Mongosia you probably frequently speak to doctors yes indeed as the president of the foundation dealing with supporting couples that are excluded due to many reasons whatsoever also financial primarily fi financial from in vitro treatments i meet uh, owners or doctors working in a uh, leading infertility clinics in poland and very good news is that we our infertility treatment is on the global level our doctors are highly effective they cope with the most complicated issues and that is truly comforting well if somebody can afford but that's the truth today you need to be able to afford it and this uneven access to the treatment methods is, is most appalling because the state should equalize uh, opportunities to access medical procedures today if you can afford it your chances your odds to get pregnant with in vitro are one of the highest in europe so we do have excellent centers and when i speak to doctors they say one thing we don't want uh, some extraordinary support we would love the state not to disturb us let's the doctors act let's the patients cure let's the families have their dreams fulfilled to be parents let's the state 
does not disturb patients in such basic things like the family. On websites uh, of infertility clinics, you may find information that where you can obtain financing because we speak education of uh, prevention, but uh, the, it's all about money anyway. That's 250,000 work out with the clinic. Well, 250,000, well, I need to say that in vitro treatment, depending on the couple's condition, is between six up to 24, 25,000 slotes. On the average, so you, you should take 12, 13,000. That's a uh, great uh, uh, prevailing price. We had 250,000 slotters for which we managed to provide the full procedure to 100 couples. That makes 2.5 thousand per couple. That's nothing. Of course, the, the money was not enough. The clinic said, we will be with you in, in that and will contribute. They doubled the amount. Uh, that's extraordinary that the clinics went for that. We've got 19 different clinics throughout Poland involved in our in vitro as head project. But if it's not the social response, if not, uh, if not this bad thing in the books, we wouldn't have those that support. We made the programs with certain assumptions, for instance, people living in uh, uh, places where local authorities support in vitro could join our program. We, Our assumption was, well, there is some support. The people can get some help. If they earn some money, they would be able to put aside certain amounts and somehow find a way to use the method. The worst problem is for those who live in local, in places where local authorities do not support in vitro. Today, Katowice is the only big city in Poland that doesn't support. There is a program to be supported, to be implemented, but this is the last big city in Poland without such a scheme. But this is not the way it should be. Today, the social in vitro program sounds proud, sounds nice. On the other hand, that a program should never be created. That method should be available, fully refunded, including supplements. These are not 50 slotted supplements you get, you get at the pharmacy. They cost hundreds of slotted. In my case, it was 1,500 slotted. Well, we do not fully understand. We speak about 10, 12,000 per single attempt, but the money spent throughout the whole uh, uh, treatment period, well, it's, it's in, incalculable. Well, just last word for me. People would pledge houses, sell cars, uh, property. They would sell all the things they have just to be able to have children. If I could contribute, well, we didn't speak much about local authorities, what they do about it, but addressing our campaign when we were collecting the signatures, one of our objectives was to, to press on, on local authorities, and we succeeded in many locations. Uh, we, we know that during our campaign, local authorities joined the process. We started the campaign in Białystok, where they didn't have the program. They had an initiative in the civic society budget, and the people voted for it, so that the uh, civic budget supported the in vitro. And uh, Mayor Truskolaski said he would have have a close look at it as the citizens opt for it. And yesterday when we met, he said he had uh, a look good enough that to, to say we would have this program. But when we speak of local authorities, as we are in Łódź, I need to mention Hanna Zdanowska and uh, Town Hall in Łódź because this is the local authority that sets an example how to do it. We have with us 
Weissmeier Adam Wieczorek with us, Weissmeier Paweł Bliźniuk. They are the authors of a, something they know, a license, because they know how to do it. They were among uh, first cities that supported in vitro from the bu uh, city budget after the state budget uh, was closed for the procedure. And they delivered this licenses to all local authorities who want to follow, because they have this know-how. They don't want to keep the knowledge here. They want people elsewhere in Poland to benefit from the procedure. So they have developed uh, this license, and it's now implemented in 18 different towns and cities. And this is what we wanted to achieve with our committee. It's not just restoring financing, that's pretty obvious, but it's also to build the culture of conversation and the culture around the procedure. Well, to sum it up, this is not a job for local authorities. Of course, we thank all local authorities, mayors of cities and municipalities. We have even small, tiny places where they do finance the procedure, but there are also uh, uh, wide spaces on the map of Poland. And, and we heard that we, we may even face uh, in vitro migration. People uh, in, in, in problems who cannot afford will try to move. That's ridiculous. It shouldn't be like that. We should have a common access, common support for those who do want to have children. We need to highlight that. The local authorities are heroes somehow, because those who actually introduce the in vitro procedure, the politicians who went for it, are are uh, immediately labeled as they are on the other side. We, as the government, won't finance them because the government tokens distributed to different uh, uh, issues is mainly to ours. So if somebody opts for in vitro, it's suspicious. So I must say those local authorities are true heroes. They go against the uh, current, and they, it's not just like Warsaw, Gdańsk, 700 children, the recent data shows. Uh, we've got lots of big cities, but small municipalities, that takes courage. Also, the societies, it's what we started from, to have this uh, general acceptance to the in vitro method, that everyone understands it, so no one is stigmatized for the decision to select this method. We all the time talk about uh, money spent on that, about financing, but what are the benefits of that, Ms. MP? Well, first benefit is uh, joy and love that parents receive. There is no higher value. It's um, worthy of all money. That's the first value and benefit. Another value is also noticed by self-governments that attractiveness of this place is increased when in the places that can offer this kind of support. I was a council member before be becoming an MP, and I was surprised that so little cities would try to look um, pro-family by showing good conditions for schooling, education, good um, um, public transportation, um, kindergartens, and also this medical support that shows people that this is a good place to live in. And it's this kind of a closed loop. And I er encourage everyone to see that as a great opportunity, also from political perspective. Each town, each city wants to be remembered. Each uh, mayor, president of the city wants to be uh, remembered that uh, the city is attractive, that people want to come there, not escape from there. I wanted also to say about financing calculations. Of course, we should not, it should not be human life should not be calculated into money. But if we look at macroeconomical scale for in vitro, 
and we hear voices from scientists that deal with that, how effective economically is this method. It is the most effective investment because in Poland, in average, from the governmental program, one procedure costs 11,000 zlotys. But later, from this procedure, a human being is born who starts after um, some years to generate benefits. He works, he pays taxes, and his involvement, his return to the budget is uh, times more th than this 11,000 that were spent for his um, birth. And it also has to be remembered. I remember a meeting in Ministry of Health in France, a country that is so pro-family, pro pro-social, and the clerk of that ministry would would uh, tell me directly, we refound in vitro because those are money that we are lending for a short time that we will receive um, in much, much more extent later. It's just an investment as we invest in roads, in airports. That's just an investment in people. I think it's a very good summarization of our panel. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. We heard so many important things about the whole system of um, counteractive the infertility. And I wish all of us to see the development of that so we can uh, address this pro-family uh, policy better. Thank you very much. Dobry, to znaczy myśmy się dzisiaj widzieli. Wie pan co, e, ja zmieniłem zdanie i chciałbym poprawić karty w urnie. Dobrze? To ja sobie poszukam. Serio? Pan sobie poszuka? Nadchodzące wybory są zbyt ważne, by zostawić je bez kontroli. Dołącz do obywatelskiej kontroli wyborów. Zróbmy wybory bez pizzy. Każdy wybór ma swoje konsekwencje. Dziś na kazaniu o takich jak ty mówili, że to morderczynie. A wiesz, że ta, która ci pomogła trafi za kraty? Trzeba mieć sumienie. Jak mogłaś to zrobić własnej matce? Aborcja to najgorsza zbrodnia. Gdybym ja podjęła taką decyzję, nie byłoby cię tutaj. Organy państwa nie będą przyglądać się temu obojętnie. Życie i zdrowie kobiety jest najważniejsze. Stop kryminalizacji aborcji. Kobieta decyduje. It's not always easy to recognize. It may look like this. Or like this. It may be a burden, but it is a responsibility that we embrace nonetheless. But if it means this for one person and this for someone else, maybe it ultimately means being there for one another. It isn't handed to us, but we know where to find it and how it feels, how it tastes and what it sounds like when we finally have it. It means different things to different people, but for many, it means everything. And if we all fight for it, it will eventually bring us together.
працюємо за воду лікарем. Займалася діагностикою хвороб новотворових. В Білорусі займалася мікробіологією, маріплярною біологією. Бувам на учителем школи підставової. Нашим цілем є збудування умієнтності, які є важливі на польському ринку праці. Швидко набирають такі певності себе, дуже швидко ще учать. Wszystko możliwe, kiedy starasz się. Jeden, jeden, jeden.